Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Zach Brown's Chicken Fried. Uh, a couple of people requested chicken fried. Uh, there was uh, Richard and Frankie. And I have to admit, yet again, I'd never heard this song before. <laughs> but it's a great song. By the Zac Brown Band. They recorded it in 2003 and released it various times and it was finally hit in 2008. Uh, it's got a nice fiddle part, which I'm going to show you the original fiddle part and one or two suggestions for how you might add extra bits of fiddle. Uh, there are a couple of very tricky things about this song and uh, both need to be dealt with. The first thing is that um, the original recording is in F sharp major, which is too many sharps uh, for anyone to reasonably think about. And um, if you study the video, you can tell that everyone has tuned down uh, from G to F sharp. The first thing you've got to do if, when, when, when the band suggests that you're going to do this song is persuade them all that it's going to be in G, not in F sharp. <laughs> Hope that the singer can handle that. If the singer can't, then you have to tell them, OK, I'm going to have to tune my fiddle down. And that is going to take me uh, five minutes to get it uh, stable. So are you prepared to, uh, to tell jokes for five minutes whilst I do that? And if you're not, are you prepared to buy me another fiddle, a spare fiddle? Um, so that seriously has to be dealt with, unless you're going to carry two fiddles, uh, one of them tuned to F sharp. This is going to be really difficult to play, uh, to do a decent job on, if it is in F sharp. So uh, yes, do try very much to do it in G, which is what we're going to do. The other thing is that a lot of the phrases start on beat two of the bar, <clears throat> including the beginning of the fiddle intro and the beginning of the solo and the beginning of the chorus. Um, there's a very strange bit where the drums come in on beat two as if they were coming in on beat one and um, if you know what's coming that's fine if you're not sure and you're relying on the drums to tell you where the one is <laughs> then you're going to be in serious trouble anyway um, so it starts off with an eight bar acoustic guitar intro which if you try and work out the timing of it is very complicated so we're going to pretend that that doesn't exist um, we're going to then go, the, the singing comes in for eight bars and there's no fiddle on that. So we're going to listen through that, although it's going to be electric rather than acoustic guitar that you hear. And then the fiddle comes in with an eight bar intro, which goes like this. And remember, we're coming in on beat two. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. Okay, then we have the vocal verse and I always say it's a good idea to learn the melody of the, of the verse and chorus even if you never play them. So what we got from the vocal is one, two, three, four. Then it's into the chorus and the, the bit I did just before the end that is the guitar line uh, but it might be worth following that. So let's do the that fiddle intro followed by the verse and I'll play the melody again for the verse.
Now, assuming that the singer is going to sing and you are not going to play unison, then um, you can do long notes. <laughs> Stuff like that using two note chords and I do have a video on how to work out two note chords uh, you could do the same thing but with a shuffle um, that was the kind of a swinging Nashville shuffle and again I've got a video on that you could do offbeat chops and You could do a combination of those, or you could alternate between different verses and choruses doing those different things. Uh, what's important is that you know where you are in the chord sequence and that you vary what you do as it goes from verse to chorus. So when we come to, into the chorus, uh, we've got this. Um, there's a one beat rest and then that's where the drums come in. And you may, um, if you were of a prog persuasion, think, okay, that must be a bar of 5-4 before that. <laughs> it's not a bar of 5-4. It's a perfectly normal 4-4 four, four bar where the drummer just happens to decide he's not going to play until the second beat. So the chorus goes... And then for backing, you could do something like this. Then we have the solo, and uh, I'm going to show you the original solo. So again, we have um, coming in on the second beat. One, two, three, four, one. See that with the backing. One. Now, is it worth learning that solo? Uh, just ask yourself how many people in the band will recognize that fiddle solo. And um, even, uh, even at a Zac Brown concert, I suspect that a lot of people will not know that solo. So if you play, make up your own solo, I think that's going to be perfectly fine. There are some solos in country music where you have to absolutely follow the, uh, the original solo because everybody knows it. And this, I would argue, is not one of them. So I'm just going to uh, show you uh, an example of another kind of solo uh, for that last bit. Here we go. Okay, uh, we actually missed out a couple of verses and a chorus, but you get the general idea. So if you would like a copy of the sheet music for this, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. And if you'd like to get hold of all of my PDFs, uh, which includes a lot of stuff about how to play country fiddle, all the shuffles, the blues scales, the riffs, um, the different artists, all that kind of stuff, then you can get all of that in one go on my Patreon page from as little as four pounds. Amazing. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon.